raise your hand if at any point in your life you thought speech production was as simple as turning your voice on and moving your lips. As SLPs know, speech is much more complicated than that. Going far beyond the lips, speech actually includes five domains or subsystems in order to be intelligible. These five domains include respiration, phonation, resonance, articulation, and prosody. Today, I'm going to discuss how SLPs can help patients improve their speech intelligibility by focusing on these five domains and some specific activities you can give within each domain. So let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Starting with the first order targets, resonance and respiration. In his book titled Motor Speech Disorders, A Treatment Guide, Dworkin suggests a treatment hierarchy based on speech subsystems where resonance and respiration are considered to be first order targets. The rationale here is a top-down approach based on the interdependence of the speech subsystems. Targeting first order targets first is likely to have the greatest impact on intelligibility and have downstream effects on the second and third order targets, which I'll get into later in this video. So let's move into respiration. Tasks you can include to help improve the respiratory domain of speech include diaphragmatic breathing, postural adjustments, training inhalation and exhalation coordination for speech, using expiratory muscle trainers, and phrase grouping strategies or breath grouping. Let me give you a few examples of these activities. Diaphragmatic breathing is what I like to call belly breathing because the goal is to only move your belly in and out as you breathe while keeping your chest stable. Sometimes I'll have patients sit upright in a chair, place one hand on their chest and another on their belly and focus on only moving the hand that's on their belly when they inhale and exhale. This can also be done while laying down. Postural adjustments may include sitting or standing upright instead of hunched over or leaning forward. Anything to give the diaphragm more room to stretch and expand the lungs. Phrase grouping, also known as breath grouping, is a way to measure how many words or phrases can be expressed in one breath before pausing to inhale. You could provide short reading passages and mark where your patient pauses to inhale, or you can record spontaneous conversation and make note of how often and where your patient pauses to take a breath. Sometimes when respiration is impaired, you might notice breath grouping or pauses in places that don't sound natural. It can be really beneficial for patients to hear these recordings played back to them to help bring better awareness to their breath support. So what about resonance? This domain tends to feel a little trickier to work with. There are behavioral intervention options, such as placing a nasal mirror or a device called a Seascape that will provide biofeedback during training. For example, with a nasal mirror, you would be checking to see if the mirror fogs up during non-nasal speech production to see if air is escaping the nose. If behavioral techniques aren't an option or aren't effective, you might need to consider a prosthetic device to manage resonance if appropriate. A colleague of mine was working with a gentleman who had early onset Parkinson's disease. He was diagnosed in his mid-30s. As his Parkinson's progressed, his breath support became weaker and weaker. His speech sounded quiet and rushed, which are two common speech characteristics of this disease. He could often only get out three to four words per breath group. Before working on articulation or phonation, my colleague targeted respiration. Together, they worked on diaphragmatic breathing and breath grouping. The more his respiration improved, the louder he could speak and the clearer his speech became. One day, my colleague received one of the best voicemails ever. It was her client speaking clearer and louder than ever, excitedly telling her that he spoke to his mother over the phone for the first time in two years. He had stopped calling her because she could never hear him. But with the help of these activities and therapeutic exercises during speech therapy, he could finally catch up with her. Everyone was in tears. Now let's discuss tasks you can complete for phonation, known as the second order target. Phonation may be addressed through vocal function exercises, managing laryngeal strain, or improving loudness with programs like Lee Silverman voice treatment or speak out. So what are vocal function exercises? 
Vulpal function exercises were originally developed by Joseph Stemple, who describes these exercises as a series of systematic voice manipulations designed to strengthen and coordinate the laryngeal musculature and to improve the efficiency of the relationship among airflow, vocal fold vibration, and supraglottic treatment of phonation. In a nutshell, these exercises are like physical therapy for the voice. They're designed to combine exercise physiology with aspects of voice production, like frontal focus, ease of voice onset, pharyngeal widening, the ways we can shape our voice. These exercises typically include a set of four exercises, warm up, stretch, contract, and power exercises. Some examples of vocal function exercises might include producing pitch glides from your lowest to your highest notes using forward placement in an open pharynx. Patients may benefit from cues like feel the buzz on your lips to help them understand what something like forward placement is. Another example of a vocal function exercise is the semi-occluded vocal tract exercise which will help the vocal fold to vibrate with less effort. Patients can use a straw or kazoo to produce voice through. A colleague of mine once saw a receptionist who had to go on long-term medical leave due to severe vocal strain and dysphonia. She was so worried that she would never be able to return to her job, but with consistent exercises that focused on reducing vocal strain, as well as improved respiratory support, she was able to get her voice back. She wound up sending my colleague a thank you card one year later on the anniversary of her outpatient therapy discharge date, saying that her life was changed and she never realized how an SLP could have such a major impact on her life and career. Are you enjoying this video so far? I will be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about the domains of speech? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Also, make sure to stick around to the end to claim a freebie or two. Finally, let's discuss the final two speech domains or third order targets, prosody and articulation. Prosody is the rhythmic and tonal aspect of speech. Some things to consider with prosody include stress and intonation. The syllable you stress can completely alter the meaning like present or present or project versus project. Intonation can include altering pitches like the rising pitch at the end of a question. Does that make sense? Activities to help with improving prosody can include pacing strategies like identified thought groups to practice pausing and stress. For example, you could create a list of phrases that have two connected phrases or thought groups like that shirt is mine, not yours, and have your client practice where to stress pause and change pitch. Another activity might include printing out lists of sentences and having your client practice reading each sentence with particular words highlighted for emphasis, such as that shirt is mine or that shirt is mine. And finally, there's articulation. That almost sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? The final domain on the list for improving speech intelligibility is articulation, the very thing most people think of first when it comes to speech intelligibility. A very commonly used strategy to improve articulation is simply over articulation exercises. Your patient can read passages and practice saying each sound in an over exaggerated manner to capture every phoneme. While it may sound super simple, remember that the goal is to practice the exact movements your patient will be making when they speak. Not tongue wagging, not puffing cheeks in and out, just speaking but in a way that's extremely intentional with each sound that's produced. Are you interested in learning even more about dysarthria assessments and treatment options? Check out episode 254 of the Swallow You Pride podcast to hear my discussion with Dr. Kayla Stepansik about motor speech disorders and the medical SLP. If you're really itching to dive into the ins and outs of motor speech disorders, then you might wanna explore Dr. Stepansik's full day course inside the MedSLP Ed Library. Links to both of these resources will be in the description below.